Hello, it is Friday, the 19th of September, 2008. This is Brian Shannon speaking, and uh, we had a hell of a week here on uh, Wall Street this week. Uh, as big and, and deep as our financial markets are, it's amazing to see how fragile they are as well. It's that it, it really, I mean, we're on what seemed like the brink of disaster, and it took just huge effort from the government to come in, manufacture this short squeeze that gives a lot of long participants the opportunity to kind of readjust uh, their idea of what risk in the markets is and uh, find some liquidity here today and yesterday for, for some of those long positions that were bleeding so badly. Hopefully you've fared well throughout it. And uh, even from a short-term trader's standpoint, there was just tremendous volatility. And if you're not you know, very quick to admit your mistakes, they, they could have really spiraled out of control this week. A lot of people got short yesterday thinking there's no way this rally is going to hold. Uh, as I said, I was hoping hoping that maybe we would pull back down towards this level and then rally, but we saw that huge gap open, and a lot of stocks just opened up at crazy levels. Um, the volatility in individual stocks was just amazing. We'll get to that in a minute. But uh, here's where we are in the S&P 500. Why didn't I draw you know, the trend line from there? Because basically you could draw it either way, and it comes up with the same thing. But we tested that trend line. We also came to the prior important lows from, uh, from August at about that 126. Uh, six and a half 127 level and we came to the declining 50-day moving average before the market backed away a little bit all in all though today the market obviously finished with a great gain four percent for the week it was down just about one percent and uh Again, it remains a very volatile day trader's environment. Fortunately for me, I'm on vacation next week, and uh, I think this market's going to need to settle in a little bit uh, before it can really, uh, before we can really determine what's next for it. There's a lot of uh, confidence in this market shaken. I think uh, what I what I think would uh, be a, a good scenario for this market, uh, a bullish scenario in fact, would be, um, let's take a look at the 30 minute time frame. It, it actually sets up better on some of the other markets, but we can see that uh, we had this uh, this low in here, this much deeper low that we saw uh, you know, on Thursday, and this could be forming potentially uh, the, the head right here, and if we saw a pullback, maybe down towards the 122 level early next week, we could get this five day moving average to rise up and meet the market there, find some support, create an inverted head and shoulders pattern in here, and the height of that pattern would be approximately 14 points. 14 points added to, you know, so we could basically just take take a line right here, grab that, and then pull it above, that would give us a price objective near about 138. Crazier things have happened, uh, as, as one reader pointed out uh, yesterday, maybe that's what we have in store leading up to the elections, that uh, we're going to uh, see this market continue to rally higher in this election year. Anything, you know, It's anyone's guess, and that's all it is. What you have to do is remember that risk management is the most important thing. Guessing where the market's going to be one month, three months, six months from now, you leave that to the people on television and the people who don't have have actually actually have their skin in the game what you have to do is manage risk and listen to the message of the market rather than impose your beliefs upon it the inverted head and shoulders uh, scenario that I'm pointing out is just a potential scenario but uh, it, we, we've clearly come very far very quickly and this market will need to consolidate and digest these gains it's very doubtful to me that the market will be able to push higher immediately past this you know 127 128 level but if it can build some energy, perhaps it's building, uh, building for for a breakout and, and a recovery. The uh, the Russell 2000, which we know has been the strongest, and there were some horrible uh, prints in there and a lot of uh, crazy crazy trades. But we got you know we got up to we closed at 75. So we can look at it on, in, in as far as that goes and say we're up to that 75 level. As we know, 76 has been tested a couple times. It looked like this market was headed back down towards 65. But when the government comes in, you can't argue with 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 the, with price because price is the only truth. It's the only thing that pays. And you can debate whether we truly have free markets or whether this is just or whatever but at the end of the day it's about making money and, and, and how can you exploit what's happening to, to put more money in your account if you can do that that's what's successful debating about whether the short uh, you know short selling should be allowed or whether it was their fault whose fault it was is irrelevant 
how can we make money off it? That's the objective. The market came up to this level here. It still hasn't pushed past it, but this is clearly the strongest market is the Russell 2000. And uh, let me uh, change this scaling in here again. Um, again, I don't know where that would happen there, but we saw that this downtrend line on the 30 minute time frame was broken yesterday. I was hoping for a pullback maybe towards this level or even down towards 70 before it rallied, but the gap obviously ruined that. We've got some strong momentum. Shorts are in big trouble. Can it last? That's what the question is. I'm not going to I'm not going to go out on a limb and say I'm, all I'm going to say right now is that we're extended pretty far here from the lows two days ago, and it seems as though it needs some consolidation, and I'm glad I'm not going to be around next week to, to try and uh, work my way through it. The semiconductors have actually been the strongest sector. Uh, they they finished up on the week. They're actually, uh, well, well, first of all, the, the IWM, going back to that, they're now up for the month and only 1% off for, for their uh their highs for the year, or, or um, not their highs, but 1% off where they closed December 31st of 2007. So that's the strongest group. The semiconductors are down a lot for the year, but they've been stronger relatively as it pushed past that 26 level. This is the area where we're looking for them to possibly continue up towards the market up open near that 27 and a quarter level, found some selling, and now it's pulling back down uh, and looking at the, you know, it broke the resistance. Resistance at 26, rallied up towards that 27, 27 and a quarter level. Now it's making these lower highs and lower lows. Maybe it's going to find support near 26. Uh, may mark a little bit of time. This five-day moving average starts to come up, and then it can continue higher. Uh, but still, it's a badly damaged market. A lot of people, I got emails. Was that the low? The low will know a long time from now. But you know, there, there's a there's a there's a chance that was the low. But uh, picking lows and, and picking highs is, is not something that, that really matters. What we want to what we want to do is we want to focus on the trends and say again that if they don't scare you out, a lot of times it will you know they'll wear you out. Just as it occurred in here, people were calling that the low back in 2001. Let me change this scaling as well so we can see it a little bit better. When the semis got smashed, they had a huge rally, but then in 2002 they it went it, uh, it went even lower. The the 200 day moving average begins to flatten out and turn higher there was a great bull market but it only lasted about 12 months in there and now we're back down we're still broken the big level this market really needs to recapture is about 27 and a half 28 and I would say on a weekly basis for for a recovery to to say, to say that we're beginning the recovery process in the semiconductors the financials are where all the action is uh, that's what's getting all the headlines and we finished uh, up 10 percent in here today for the week this group was up 3.7 percent which is pretty amazing considering you know where we started out the week with with Lehman Brothers and all that it seems like uh, it seems like months ago but you know this market back into this range here um, it, to me, it's just not a group that I'm interested in trading. There's just too much volatility, too much news. A lot of people are doing well with it, and if you're one of them, continue to do what works well for you. Just manage risk. It's a very, very volatile sector, subject to a lot of outside influences from from foreign uh, foreign governments, from our own government to takeovers and take unders and, and bear raids not anymore the bear raids but uh, it's a very dangerous group and really you've got to you've got to uh, be really on your toes to be to be involved in there because the moves are, are, are fast and furious uh, oil was uh, the USO was up three dollars and eighty cents today looking like it's heading maybe for a rally up towards that 85 86 level next potential resistance level would be near that 200 day moving average at ninety dollars uh, and you know it's getting a little bit extended in here it's uh, above its rising five day moving average so you want to give the benefit of the doubt to the buyers in the intermediate term but larger term it's still a broken picture so we've got conflicting messages on different time frames in there the Nasdaq was up uh, was a 3.2 percent today uh, right up to and this was from the the live uh, video uh, I had done earlier uh, live chat session that is but it came right up to these prior lows near about 44 44 and a quarter uh, before the sellers came in and this is where we can really see that is the Nasdaq 100 uh, where we can see the potential for that um, 
inverted head and shoulders pattern. Here's a 30 minute time frame. Here we can call this the, well, here's the neckline clearly. And it's at that important level again from the daily right here. So this 44 and a quarter area takes on significance from the daily time frame, but also it had seen this resistance here. We could call this maybe the beginning of a left shoulder, and you can't really write good in here, and this being the head right in here, and now maybe we're going to form a right shoulder. Perhaps it continues down towards about 41.75, $42 early next week, shakes some people out, but uh, you know creates a lower right shoulder than what we saw on the left shoulder and then the five-day moving average flattens out starts to turn higher the implications you know the bullish implications here let's just be conservative and call it four points uh, we could say so from 43 and a half down to 39 and a half that's four points it, that would indicate 47 and a half 47 and a half is right up in here in this area so that would basically put us back to test this uh, downtrend line in here the markets remain volatile huge you know huge influences from all kinds of areas that you normally wouldn't expect it makes it a super high risk trading environment with big risk comes great opportunity and great reward and uh, you know reward potential but the knife cuts both ways and we've seen what leverage does leverage is the enemy that, that got us into this mess for this market don't be extending yourself and in, in loading up instead just be conservative manage risk realize you're not going to get every single uh, trade out there some of them are going to go by but if you have good money management principles and good strategies in the end you're going to outperform these these indices